you're at the movies, the lights are starting to come up, the popcorn is setting like a concrete block in your stomach, your feet are still stuck to the floor, but you're thinking about the guns. It was terrible. Guy had a revolver, fired 300 rounds, never reloaded once. Hit a car with one bullet, the car blew up in the air, looked like it was hit with a nuclear weapon. How could they get everything so wrong? Welcome to Shooting Gallery. I'm your host, Michael Bain, and this week we're going to introduce you to a man that helps the movies get everything right. My name is Michael Gibbons, and uh, I'm an armor in the film industry. I have a company, Gibbons LTD, and we supply any kind of armament necessary to the motion picture theatrical industry. What we have here are two 1911s, a new Sig Sauer and old Springfield. The difference is one of these guns has been changed over to only operate with blanks. Mike, what do you have to do to chew a 1911 up that way? Well, you, you really have to junk the gun out. We have uh, quite a lot of modification. The problem we run into on modifying these for blanks, or to make them cycle on blanks, is that there's no bullet or no projectile to produce recoil, which is how these guns are operated. They're operated off the recoil of a, of a projectile. When you lose that, then you have to turn them into what's called a blowback type mm -hmm. of weapon, which means you have to defeat the locking system. Some locking systems are pretty simple, some aren't. This, this style weapon has a very complicated right. locking system right. so that it's, it's ex just as complicated to defeat the system. It quite, takes quite a lot of work. So what happens when you drop a live round into a gun that's been converted to fire blanks? Well, it depends a lot on the gun. Um, the 45s will bulge the barrel, it'll bend things up, uh, create a lot of havoc, and probably be real uncomfortable in somebody's hand, but they don't seem to blow up. Lesser guns would explode. You'd have a you'd have a hand grenade, you'd have a slide coming off, you'd have some severe injuries. Not something you want to have happen. Not even. Uh, I had a gun go to Mexico and the Mexicans decided they were gonna shoot a live round out of a blank 45. And when I got the gun back, it was quite interesting on the inside. Large caliber weapons only on the Outdoor Channel. Okay, check this out. This is my new Steel Challenge gun. Todd Jarrett, look out. Actually, this gun's a movie star of sorts. It was featured in the Jet Li movie, The One. This bad boy right here, one of the RoboCop sequels, Sin City. Mike, one of the coolest things you do is put together specialty guns for movies. How does that work? Well, we get to order, you know, depending on how, what they want on the RoboCop gun, we. Um, we actually just had an order to duplicate the RoboCop pistols because the originals were not available. So we made them up out of Beretta 92Fs. Uh, we had about three weeks to build them after the original supplier told me three weeks from camera time that he wasn't going to let us have them. These shotguns here that we built for uh, Showtime with Eddie Murphy and Robert De Niro, we got together with the production designer and um, they brought us a drawing of what they wanted and uh, said build it, and that's what we built it from. That, that was the only drawing we had. It was all engineered by us uh, using a Saiga semi-automatic shotgun. So we, we literally built this from scratch, except for the receiver, the shotgun receiver. That's almost the only recognizable thing is this typical AK system safety lever exactly, in there. Yeah. It's all that's left. But it was a total, I mean, it was a, a you know, from, from start to finish was about four months. And we built 10 of them. Plus, uh, we made rubber and replica ones, so it was uh, quite a project. So these guns will fire blanks? Absolutely. They'll shoot a special, it's a special custom 12 gauge, they're very, very hot. They make a lot of noise and a great big ball <laughs> of fire. In fact, the uh, I think the comment from the director the first time we fired one in our little shooting room here for him was, that's evil. <laughs> Okay, it will not be available at a gun show near you at all. Not anytime soon. How many of these do you do a year? How many specialty guns do you do a year? We probably, we don't even do one every year, but probably it averages out to maybe one a year. They, they generally don't want to spend the money to do a project like this unless there's a real, real major reason for it. So most of the stuff we do is 
is taking standard guns and maybe changing sights or grips or adding a silencer or a compensator. We don't something like. Yeah, that was that's still a pretty good project. The whole front half of that gun is is made. I mean, that's all machined out of uh, on, you know aluminum with a barrel extension. And it was a lot of work on that, but nothing compared to this. Sort of the ultimate race gun. Kind of. So the next time you go to the movies and you see all the gun stuff done exactly right, you have a pretty good idea of who to thank. Thank you, Mike Gibbons, and thank you, Gibbons Limited.